Hello and welcome to the third of our sessions on worship, replacing the planned worship roadshows. My name is Nicola and I'm the Children and Youth Development Officer for the Eastern Synod of the United Reformed Church. This session is entitled An Introduction to All Age Worship and will hopefully get us thinking about being together in intergenerational worship. In the first session, Paul got us thinking about why we worship and before even venturing into trying to define all age worship, it's good to recap why we worship together. So to recap from the first two sessions, the number one reason for us gathering together is to give God his worth. It should therefore be reverent, holy and full of praise. We are looking to enable a connection between God and those gathered to facilitate an encounter, to be transformational and relevant to our lives today. Thinking about the prospect of all age worship can easily produce a cry of anguish. I remember as I started out in family ministry many years ago, being given a short book entitled All Age Worship, suggesting that we might be entering a battle. I reflected on some of the things I had heard said about all age worship from different members of a church congregation when there had been an all age service. Here are some of their quotes from the single parent. Oh, no, the children are going to be staying in church. Feeling the panic of keeping two small children occupied and quiet from the more mature single person. Action, songs and craft. That's not for me wondering why they cannot have their usual morning service. From children saying to their parents, why can't I go to junior church? It's boring here. And finally, from the person leading the service, it takes so much preparation. These are just individual thoughts, but possibly reflect how many people feel. This quote from Lucy Moore sums it up for me. It's time to admit that worship with all ages present is easy to do appallingly and difficult to do well. It's time to acknowledge that it takes a huge amount of grace from every participant. So let us think about what is all age worship? Just for a brief moment, ask yourself, what age do you think of when you hear the words all age? When I've asked this question in training, most people say a child somewhere between three and 16. Very few ever think of anyone between the age of 17 to 100. If that's our initial reaction, then we invariably start to plan around what we think the children need and not about intergenerational worship that engages everyone, no matter what age that gives everyone space to encounter God. All age suggests that the only difference is age. We divide people by the number of years they've been alive, not by their depth of spirituality, how long they've been Christians, the way that they learn, or any other definition that highlights the diversity of the people whom Christ has called to follow him. The list could go on, as each of us are different irrespective of age. We come together, all generations, in intergenerational worship. The definition of all age worship from Lucy Moore sums up what we're aspiring to. A gathered community of Christians coming together to praise God, meet him and learn about him. David Sinos writing about the spirituality of children, and for me, all ages, wrote, we come in many colours, shapes and sizes, and we express the common spiritual dimension of our humanity in many different ways. Still, we are rooted in the same soil. We may express our spirituality in different ways, but we all need to be rooted in Christ, the source of our wisdom. In the Bible, we can see examples both in the Old and New Testament that highlight the presence of children in the worshipping community. 
in some cases at the heart. And if we are to be like children to enter the kingdom, then how can we do that if we constantly send them to another place for their worship and learning? We learn from each other by worshipping together. Children belong with the worshipping congregation because the body of Christ has no age requirements. Christianity is age inclusive. Even when worshipping together, we often feel the need to send the children to another part of the church to colour or play. The challenge is to worship together as one body, each bringing their own respective skills and needs. How do we consider this diversity and make a service accessible to all without dumbing down, trivialising or going above people's heads? Worshipping together helps to build relationships across the generations, encouraging a parent and child to pray together or getting an older person who sat alone to help the dad struggling to manage three children on their own. We can build relationships together. The worship needs to involve everyone. As Lindsay said in last week's session, we cannot please everyone all of the time. But by including a picture to accompany a Bible reading that may be too difficult for someone to understand, we can connect with them in a different way. We need to be inspiring. If we're not excited by what we're saying, then others will feel the same. The service needs to be accessible to all, thinking about the language that we use. It needs to engage the senses and include different styles. Some of us like visual images, others symbols and others listening and the written word. By engaging the senses, we can really help people to reflect. Be creative in what you say and do and encouraging, encourage those participating to think and respond creatively. For just a moment, let's consider what all age worship is not. As I've already mentioned, it's not child focused. It's for everyone. We should not be dumbing down what we do, but looking for different ways to engage. We'll be looking in future sessions about how to do this. The worship should not be considered as entertainment or become a performance. Everyone needs to feel they're a part of the worship and the service should not be segmented into bits that are just for the children. I once attended a service and heard, as the story was announced, children, this is for you, a sure way to get the adults to stop listening. In the session on structuring an act of worship, Lindsay gave many ideas that are as relevant to all age worship as any other services. But I want to share with you my top tip for planning an all age worship. I've used fishing examples as my reminder and whenever planning a service that involves all ages, I find this helps me to focus. Starting with the Bible passage and prayer, decide what you want everyone to go away from the service thinking about and use this to plan all the aspects of the service. What is your hook? How are you going to get everyone engaged? It can be a simple picture or object, but it draws everyone in. I find when I revisit a church, there's always someone who will remember my hook. The line. Consider the main point that will ebb and flow through the service. How will this be developed? How will you unpack the message through songs, prayers, reading and creative ideas? And finally, what will everyone take home in their net? What will they be thinking about and reminded of through the week ahead? Children and many adults have a short attention span. With children, you cannot exclude the fact that their attention span is less. A toddler will listen for a minute for each year of age, so no activity can really be more than five minutes. That does not mean the service has to be short, but that no single element should last for more than five minutes. Try reflecting on the Bible reading in two different ways, with a song in between. Most importantly, keep the flow of the service. Stick to one theme, one clear message reiterated in different ways. Don't try and make too many points. Decide on the aim, as I mentioned previously. Use simple language, make it understandable, 
not using long words that will require explanation. Try to include the use of more than one sense in each activity, so visuals and words or actions and words. Symbols are accessible to people of all ages. For example, a stone, cross, heart, light and water are all symbols that help us to discover and rediscover truth about God through worship. Give space for silence and reflection. Children need space for reflection and silence just as adults do. If you're concerned, the best way is to say, so, say when the quiet time will end so that children and adults can relax. They will if they know how long it's going to be. You can combine pictures and music with quiet reflection time and that engages all learning styles. Make space for awe and wonder ask I wonder questions and allow people to use their imagination. Do not feel that you need to give an answer or explain. Encourage participation using different voices and ages to be part of the worship. Paul quoted in his first session, we should never come out of worship without having been surprised. And perhaps that begins by surprising ourselves. As this quote from Vincent Donovan's Christianity Rediscovered says, we can journey in a different way and experience new things together. In working with children and all ages, do not try to call them back to where they were and do not try to call them to where you are, as beautiful as that place may seem to you. You must have the courage to go with them to a place that neither you nor they have ever been before. <laughs>